Hello, veteran 0121 here. Welcome back. This is another episode of Dragon Quest 7. Last episode, we defeated the boss that was in charge of the Black Flame at the Beacon. And we restored peace to the Buckingham region. We also acquired the Sea Serpent Blade, one of the best weapons in the game for the hero. And uh, it's just a, it's a great sword. Fantastic sword, fantastic weapon. Oh! I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, I want to go actually talk to the dwarves. I don't want to leave yet. I'm glad I remembered. Yeah, we gotta stop by the dwarves real quick. So yeah, we're getting pretty close to the end, man. We're starting to get there. Yes, we have, Gabo. You really are asking me, do we have any reason to be here? Come on, you know we do. Gotta talk to the dwarves. Oh, hey. Yes, sir, it was. Right, still gotta watch out for bad guys in here. Klepto clobber. That's cool that the gladiator gets that. Leveling up. Kick ass, man. Kick ass. Yeah, I'm thinking at this point, pretty much all the level caps have been removed. Which is nice. Now Ira's leveling up. Yeah, Ira's got a good mix of strength and agility, man. She's one fantastic character. Oh man. Well, 
Eventually, Ira is going to get multi fists, which is going to be fantastic for her. Anyway, I don't remember if I check these pots. But yeah, the queen bee. Yeah, whatever. We're not weird. Good to go, man. Hell yeah, man. People with beards are clever. Dude, we are human, man. This, this statement would only make sense if we were monster classes. Yeah, what do we have to do to prove that we're human? Alright, whatever man, we get a water mall wand, which, the, I don't know, it does like a crappy fucking water spell that I probably don't give a shit about. So I'll sell it. And we get a mysterious fragment. Treats. So yeah, that's fun. I think we're done here. Yeah, we're not bad. Yeah, well, you know, it's not all their fault, man. Would you rather side with us or the monsters? Take your pick. <laughs> Who is worse? The monsters or us? Anyway, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, 
you got a jaw twice hard in there. Again, I don't I haven't really looked up the monster classes. I haven't, you know, researched what ones have what abilities. I'm probably not really too worried about it. Like I mentioned before, like a long time ago, uh, when I first got the vocations, I mean, I could see myself maybe getting the Platinum King and giving that to somebody so they can get Omni Heal. Because uh, I think, well, I think the hero gets that ability. But if you want a character with, you know, like, let's say you have a champion and you want them to have Omni Heal, I think, you ha I think the only way to get it is uh, to learn it from the Platinum King. I mean, you could just make all your characters heroes, I guess, and then have Omni Heal with everybody. But what the fuck is in fun is that? I don't know. But then, of course, if you don't have any champions, then if you want to use Blade of Ultimate Power or Ultra Hit, um, yeah, it's yeah, you won't have it with those characters. But anyway, let us zoom to S start, I guess. really matter where I zoom to because find my flying carpet all right Buckingham in the presence oh look there's a bridge doesn't look like any new land masses are around. Those other fragments, those mysterious ones. The altar of the Almighty is still missing. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Golem Heart. I heard that this one's actually okay. Or at least it is in Dragon Quest V. In fact, I think it's one of the more powerful monsters in Dragon Quest V. If you can recruit a golem in that game. I can't imagine it being that much different in this game. Then again, I, I really don't know. So, I mean, feel free to post information about monster hearts and what monsters are good and all that kind of shit. Because I really don't know. Drop it in the comments section, man. I don't mind. For other people, you know. Other people that are watching might want to know. Alright, so yeah, the beacons are saying... Eh, we'll just go to Buckingham first. I don't think there's any other treasure we can find around here. But this place will have changed dramatically. Oh, yes. Buckingham is a completely different place. Top tourist destination for travelers from all territories, huh? Really? Tradesman entrance. Access for an author. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Hello. Yeah, my spider sense is tingling. Yeah, man, we still gotta thaw out that ship. Or maybe we can ask the captain if I can commandeer that damn thing. That'd be sweet, huh? 
be amazing. What a sad, sad story. <laughs> oh yeah, the casino. What? I didn't know you so, to be so religious there, Ira. Yeah, there's a fucking tablet around here somewhere, man. Like, I want to say it's... Yeah, I don't know what the stipulations are for it yet. But there's a tablet in that room. Like, I think I remember you gotta, like, you gotta search underneath this fucking, uh, this altar here. But I don't think we can do it yet. We gotta talk to somebody and then they give us a clue and then we can do it. But we can't do it yet. Something like that. So yeah, the royal family hasn't used this place for like centuries apparently. I suppose, man, that you turn it into a tourist attraction, they can make money off people that come here. It's actually a pretty smart strategy. Hmm. Soft touch. I don't know what that means. Maybe an ice... Yeah. I can see the ice shield being okay. Maybe. Maybe I'll pick up a couple of those later. But right now, it's not really a high priority of mine. And wait a minute. Where did he come from? He wasn't in here a few seconds ago. Okay, same stuff. The big one is the dragon's being, I guess, if you care about that. I don't know, I, I don't really, like, Dragon Quest Eight is the only game in the series where I actually give a shit about the weapons that do damage to certain enemy types. Like, the Dragon Slayer in Dragon Quest Eight is amazing in the Dragovian Trials. But that's about it, like, I don't really like swords in Dragon Quest Eight. Like, spears are the way to go in that game. Because of the skills, the skills are just way better. You got multi thrust, you got fucking um, lightning thrust, which is good for metal enemies. Mercurial thrust has its uses. So many good skills with the spear, man. Oh, 
swords in Dragon Quest VIII, again, I, I only use them end game with a Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slash, Dragon Slayer, Max Tension, Death to Dragons. if there was anything out there. But yeah, let's move it. And yeah! That is going to be MIDI metal number 86? 85. Whatever. So it means I can get that uh, enclosure plan or whatever that was. <laughs> Come on, Melvin, it's okay. <laughs> but I hope I might try my hand at... No, no, I must not succumb to such a wicked vice. <laughs> at least he's trying to do the right thing. Yeah, Melvin is a very virtuous soul. That's why I see him as a paladin. I don't know. I suppose I could also see him as a hero. Like, you know, if you wanna if you want him to be overpowered. You know what that music means. Oh, well we'll hear we'll hear more of it soon enough. But yeah, here in the casino I'm not gonna be gambling all that much on screen. <laughs> I'll show you what a puff puff is, Gabo. In fact, I'm not even sure if I showed that in my PlayStation playthrough, to be honest. I know how to get one, though. Wow, Ira is really showing her religious side right now. I don't think the Almighty gives a shit if you gamble, to be honest. Well. So yeah, they're basically hinting at the Sea Dragon being a huge part of the story coming up. Still got thirty-five thousand tokens. I don't need any more at present. Uh, what are you guys about poker? Um, what am I doing? No, I don't want to play poker. Poker's for real gamblers. I like the mindless slots. 
At least there I don't have to think. <laughs> Melvin has no luck, apparently. It's alright, Melvin. I'll do the gambling for all of us. Anyway, this is the exchange counter. Let's look at the prizes. Yeah, you can get a dress of leaves here. I'm gonna get this mysterious fragment because we're gonna have to anyways. And we can get an enclosure plan. Uh, I'll get that later. Okay, in the earlier translations of Dragon Quest, or, well, yeah, in, in the earlier, in the PlayStation version of the game, this is called the Falcon Sword. And in pretty much every other translation in any other game in the series is called the Falcon Blade or the Falcon Sword. Why the hell they decided to change it to the Mercury's Raper makes no sense to me. They should have just kept it the same. Uh, yeah, this armor right here allows you to regain health during battle. I would not waste 20,000 tokens on this. Metal King Helm. Best helmet in the game. 50,000 tokens. I recommend getting four of them. Or at the very least three. Depending on who your fi final party is. Because Maribel cannot equip it. But the Metal King Helm is the best helmet in the game. Gives you 25% resistance against death, fizzle, uh, confuse, and sleep. But yeah, you can go that way if you want to leave and shit. <laughs> Dirty old man. <laughs> Melvin's trying to be all chivalrous. That lecherous fiend. Or whatever he fucking said, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so we got like one token machines on this floor, right? I don't recommend using those unless you're really short on tokens. Did you know that VIPs can go and talk to the girl on the balcony to receive a certain special something? No, I did not. Really? Extra special customers, huh? That sounds great. <laughs> Melvin has an idea what it could be. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Alright, Melvin, I'm with you, buddy. I am totally with you. Psyching yourself up. But tension doesn't get introduced until the next game. What are you talking about, guy? Oh, three sevens. No, I don't want to play the slot machine. Let's look at it, though. Yep, this one has two rows of sevens. I don't know if any of the other machines do or not. This one does not, so I wouldn't even use this one. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Alright, so at the top floor here... A wing and a pair, most popular game. Okay, what's this about again? Yeah, I, I just play the slots, man. Oh, I also heard that, that if you play Lucky Panel, 
Uh, at any of the casinos, you can win gear. Like, overpowered gear. I'm not, like, yeah, I, I don't really care about that, man. I mean, can you win dragon robes? Or metal king helms? Because if you can't, I don't really give a shit. But yeah, these are the 100 token machines. There's only two of them. Let's take a look at them here. Yeah, this one only has one row of sevens. And... This one also only has one row of sevens. But... I mean, if you can win big at these machines, you'll win fucking big. I mean, you'll be pretty much set. Anyway, let's go out here. Hello, fair maiden. Alright, well, we'll have to come back with a VIP pass, huh? Right, Melvin? But yeah, I'll, I'll be gambling off screen. But in this casino, I would probably start off with the uh, 10 token slot machines and just save scum your tokens uh, obviously go for the machines that got two rows of sevens those give you the best chance to win and then once you think you got enough you know just go on up to the 100 token machines and go nuts No baddies, huh? Well, that'll make it easy. <laughs> 30 gold? Come on. What the hell is that? Treats. Yummy. One hundred and twenty gold. That is a magic key. Treasure. That one hundred and twenty gold is worthy of a magic key. Chest. Man. But yeah, we get another mini metal. That that's that's more like it. <laughs> but wow. I don't know, Five hundred gold would make more sense. You know in a magic key chest, you would think. This is the new Buckingham Palace. Humans and dwarves live side by side. Nice.
Yeah, isn't a palace supposed to have a certain sort of pristineness to it? Oh well, I guess these dwarves think of it as pristine. Pilchard pie! Outstanding. Not that I care. It's actually not that outstanding. I don't know, man. Maybe I'll find a use for those later. Maybe there's some, like, secret thing you can do with those. Maybe there's somebody who wants them, you know, and I could trade them for, like, 10,000 gold a pot. That would be nice. Yeah, man, maybe we gotta find the Demon King and, uh, kick his butt. That way we can, uh, free the ship from the ice. Okay, King Buckingham's library, huh? Melvin, maybe we'll check it out. But first, we're gonna break some stuff down here. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Horse poop. Man. That's the kind of stuff you guys store in your treasury? Pink pearls. Okay, she has strength. That's good. And wow, that is very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming indeed. And yeah, this over here wasn't there before. Hey, princess. No, she's a lot more distinguished than Princess Lisette. Princess Lisette is like half retarded. She can't even speak properly. Oh yeah? I'll race you to it, kid. You're gonna be a pirate, huh? That ship's gonna be mine, damn it. I wonder, I wonder who they were. Oh, the beacon has monsters again. What the fuck?
Demon King is no more. Why has the sea dragon still not thought out? Well, maybe he's hiding somewhere. Yeah, he's got to be out there somewhere. Yes, we're going to expose the fiend and put his ass to the sword. Absolutely. Man, I love Melvin. He's just awesome. Gotta love that enthusiasm. Alright, so what kind of weapons do they have here? Uh, okay, you can buy a water mall wand. Or a fire blade. I guess this fire blade, maybe you can cast like Sizz or Frizz or probably a weak spell. And yeah, you can get a dragon's vein here if you want. Cool. What do you have? Yeah, I think the flame shield is good against um, ice attacks. Like, I think it reduces crack damage by, like, 30 points and ice breath damage by 30, if I recall. I think I remember reading that somewhere. Slime armor, huh? Better than the slime guniform and platinum headgear. Again, if you put, like, all the platinum gear together, like the sword, the helmet, uh, the armor, and a shield or whatever, I'm sure you get, like, a style bonus or something like that. Yeah. Seeds of magic, I like ye. Okay. No more loot. Let's go talk to the king. <laughs> Got a thing for the queen, huh? It is possible, Ira. All right, a smart suit. I imagine that would probably raise wisdom. And oh yeah, you know I forgot to mention this. You know this thinking cap I've had for the longest time now that re uh, increases the character's wisdom by 15 when it's equipped. Not bad, but wisdom doesn't matter in this game, really. I mean, it doesn't increase your spell power. The only thing that it affects is. Um, like your AI. Like if you choose to put the characters in AI, they'll act a lot smarter. Wow, you are tiny. Oh yeah. Dwarf. Well, let's go talk to the old boy.
Hey. And just like that, he gives us a VIP pass. Thank you. Oh yes, Melvin, we are about to be rewarded. That's right. Me and Melvin are about to be rewarded. Ira can join in on the reward too if she wants. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Oops. That is right. It is time to claim our reward for all our journeys, suffering and hardship. We are about to get what we deserve. That's not how you do a puff puff. What the hell? What about Melvin? Doesn't he want one? That wasn't a puff puff. Come on, man, I want the real Puff Puff. Aw, oh, man, I feel gypped. I feel totally gypped. Oh, well. Maybe you can do something else with that VIP pass, too. Well, yeah, I'm going to be gambling for a little bit, I think. So before I move on with the plot, I will show how many tokens I have, and I'll show getting those Metal King Helms. I might just go for three of them. Because, yeah, you know, I, I think I just want to go for three. Unless I hit it, I mean, if I hit it really big, then I'll get four, but... If I struggle to get three, then that's all I'm going to go for, because all I really need is three, considering what my final party is going to be. Alright, so that's all for this episode of Dragon Quest Seven. I hope you come back for the next video. See you next time. Bye-bye.